The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Our Dow's down 206. S&P's down, uh, uh, down 18. Uh, QQQs are down as well. Uh, SMHs, semiconductors, is down uh, about $1.41. Not too bad at, at 126.81. I just typed into the den. The impeachment process must not be taken lightly. It is a, it is a process that is fraught with political connotations. At a certain point, the legal connotations are almost like subsidiary because it's, it's just a huge political process. And it's not that. In this case, this is different to the Clinton one. It's different to the, to the Nixon one. Here you've got, um, here you've got a, a slew. I, I mean, every committee has something going on that is could be debilitating. Each one of them could be debilitating. What do I mean by debilitating? I mean, there's a process going on here of trade. We're looking at interest rates. Nothing here has changed from every crisis that we've seen for the last uh, two years. Interest rates, um, China trade, um, the, uh, I, I would even put into this category the divisiveness within uh, bodies, and I've always said that uh, Republicans resign immediately. Trump is about the only one who hasn't done that, and uh, Democrats stay. That's just, I don't know what it is. That just seems to be the process. So, within that context, it means that the poor candidates that are trying to vie for office, they're going to get no time whatsoever. I don't know what the Democrats are thinking. They, they are way behind the eight ball to get. I always look at it this way. In a political point, and the reason why I'm talking about this is this right now, we're talking about, um, you know, I talk about the dark cloud cover. Let me just do this. I'll get that out of the way for the moment, and I'll talk about the dark cloud cover. Um, bad news, dark cloud cover. We've seen this rectangle formation uh, for, uh, this is the fourth time. And what it, the process means that very little gets done. Now, on the one hand, I always like to say, hey, if very little gets done, that's usually a good thing. But that's not really the process that goes on. Um, what happens is there's a methodology. And within that methodology, uh, there's a structure that's formed, and government participates in whatever it needs to in a fairly independent way. Each branch is, does its thing. So when it comes to the economy, you want the whole whole economic side of, regardless of if it's a political process, you want the economic side of the country to be functioning. You want the pros and cons. You want the benefits and the uh, the negatives. You want them all to be flowing just as they always do. But if that process gets stopped, it means that one party can hold up something that is really important to the country in the longer term for a political reason. It doesn't matter which one it is, which side. I'm just saying that that's what you got to look at and say, that that's not a good thing, because there are moments that you have to take opportunity and use it. That's the capitalist society. That's the, that's the methodology. And, um, and see where it goes. So we've got now a bad news cloud cover. And what do I mean by that? I mean that in each one of these cases, we've gotten to a Chapman Wave PD. Now I can go back to that other chart and we'll just we'll switch. I want to go. Th I'm going to go through all the different indices right now. But in the meantime, I, I want to put it. I want a little free make this like a Friday Chapman Wave t uh, technical session. I want to have a little free thinking just so that I can show you uh, in real terms exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, one of the reasons why we've been negative, one of the most negative times we've been, at least in indices. For, the, for quite a while. And could be wrong. I don't mind being wrong. We've got our stop and play. We've got everything in place. But the technicals say that this is a time that could be fraught with some upheaval. 
Why? Because in September, in April of 2019, the 23rd of April, we went to a peak D in the Chapman wave at 26,695. Fortunately for subscribers, we went short the day before and we ran all the way down. We were able to switch at the exact low of June the 3rd to the long side. Then it went to another peak D, the fourth highest peak. So now I have to go back to this chart here just to say that within the context of the Chapman Wave methodology, just for those of you who are new to my work, what we're always looking for is an identifiable low bar. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. And you want to climb to a one to the first peak, which is we call peak A, if it reverses down and doesn't take out the starting point low. Then if it takes out that peak A by one penny on the upside, it starts a leg B. That leg B continues until it reverses down and makes a peak. Then the same process happens. This low can go even lower than the low after peak A. It doesn't matter. It mustn't go low for, lower than the starting point. And then what you're looking at is one penny above B. And it starts leg C, and that stays a floating ledger until it becomes a peak C, it goes leg C, leg C, until it becomes a peak C with, a, with a, a, a peak that's made with a lower high bar. And then one penny above C goes to D. Now you can go to E, F, and G, but it's at that fourth highest peak that other things can happen. And you'll see how many dozens and dozens of times that fourth highest peak is serious. I only look for three patterns, straight up, straight down, look like that, straight down, straight up. An arch formation, I make it red because if you take out the left side low, other things can happen there as well. And green on the upside for a cup because if you make, if you take out the left side high, you can get quite a bit higher. Now, you can make, get a combination, same thing. It's just cup, arch, and a straight line. So straight line down, make a lowercase h pattern. We call it the dreaded h because if it takes out that left side low, it can go lower. And the Y pattern, if it takes out your reverse Y, if it takes out the left side high, you can go even higher. All right. Within that context, I'm going to be doing a webinar on the 19th of Tuesday, November, the 19th of uh, November. Five o'clock to 6.30, or an hour and a half. And it says, yeah, the path, the path of least resistance is not, of course, is the opening call. That's Dave's um, um, newsletter, just as a, and we'll change that error. Um, so it's the opening call, Bowser Chapman, for subscribers only. This is an event that I'm going to talk about. I've been asked a number of times, could I just explain some of the techniques that have been proven really good for us so far? Um, in, uh, you know, when I do my analysis every day. So we'll have a comprehensive review of the Chapman Wave techniques and, and market outlook ahead for 2020. Just make it a real simple heading, and we'll look at some of the, uh, the uh, we will look at some of the picks that we've had that are given 15 to 30 uh, percent entry year gains. But we'll also be looking at um, what kind of techniques, how, how have I developed this thing? Not everything, of course, it's not enough time. But I'll be giving you the gist of what we're looking at and how you can use it and how you can understand it. Now, within this context, the day is young. This is the first day of the most recent high. It's not an all-time high. It was in the S&P. It was in the NASDAQ. So I have to respect that, that this is maybe just the starting uh, position right here, a little rollover. We did go into the Chapman Wave inside track support level, that repellent zone. We went over it. Now we're a little bit inside it. You, you really need to see something below 20. I, I'd even say 26,830. We might start something more serious. And this is just the beginning. The bank D still is very good, and stochastics at 87%. So I'm using the Chapman Wave technique here to see if we're able to time a turn. I'll be right back, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I've always Basel Chapman Tiger Technicians are Dallas down 204, S&P is down 17. So let's go through these one at a time. I just want to show you the daily Dow. We went uh, above the inside track, repellent zone, come back into it. And I'm just telling you that unless we get very quickly by, hmm, I want to do a couple of things I wanted to explain. But unless we get a slide into the 28, uh, 26,850 area or lower, really quickly, um, hey, we might just see this is another one of those sideways moves. Uh, but if it does start to bend and, and, and curve like the arch formation I've drawn there, um, then you must see the MACD, which is still strong, cross negative, and you need to see the stochastic at 87%. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking it'll take even a close below 26,750 to, to get this, to get these technicals very negative. So we might be looking at a process. Now, here's the, here's the other thing. So on the on the weekly chart, you've got a down channel. See the little tiny down channel across the Chapman wave inside track repellent or sell zone. Well, the old Kel zone right now is not looking too tasty because the price failed to, to hold above it this week. It's below it, and the MACD is not yet crossed positive. Almost did, but it didn't. And the stochastic is not so good at 72%, not, not bad. Now, it's this monthly chart that I'm looking at that is really important. Why do I spend time on the, on, on the Dow? It is the Dow 30. It isn't the Dow Industrials anymore. It is the Dow 30. And I say that because you've got Home Depot, you've got Caterpillar, then you've got United Technologies, but then you've also got Microsoft. I mean, you're all over the show. So it's the Dow 30, and it's really important. Most, most important to me is the monthly chart was so close. Look at it, a couple of hundred dollars, and it would have gone right to a leg D, and it's failed to do that. Now I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, if there is a, when you close the month and the day before, you either at a low, and then the day before, there's a spectacular move to the upside, and then all of a sudden, the very next month, the opening of the next month, big moves up. You've invariably made some kind of a low of importance if it's the monthly chart. We've seen that in a couple of Junes over the decades. We've seen that in just a couple of months, we, it looked horrible, and then at the last moment, it, it was saved. You've also seen it on the upside, where everything looked great right up until about the last day of the month, and then kaboom. 
it just tanked. And that means you start off the next candle, in this case, the month of November candle, I'll make this a little bit bigger, and you're starting off much, much lower than the high that was made of that month. So what I'm saying is that if there is a lousy close today, a lousy follow through instead of a nice rebound tomorrow, but a lousy follow through tomorrow, all of a sudden you're looking at November starting off a couple of hundred points, a few hundred points off the top of the candle that was looking fantastic. Now we've got a very long wicked candle. You want to see us a nice green close there um, to be a big positive candle. If we start to close at any point down in the 26,724 level um, on any weekly basis, that's going to say, hey, just be careful, because now you're looking at the 26,300s um, in, in the nine period moving average in the weekly chart. I don't even want to look out that far. I just want to say right now, the MACD is not good in the, uh, it's improving, but it's not positive yet in the monthly chart. Stochastic still being really strong and flat at 88%. I'm a little concerned that the on balance volume, this little blue line here, is getting to highs. Ah. Uh. That usually makes me a little nervous. All right, so nothing, nothing here is out of the ordinary other than we've got, what do we have? Finally, we've got a dark, a bad news cloud cover. Now, I don't know whether the rectangle started right here because this is very unusual. Not once in these three um, rectangle dark cloud covers from the peak Ds that I was looking at, did we go to a new high after I got the, uh, the signal? We got close, but we didn't make a new high. But we did here, just briefly, but we did it. We did it um, on a closing basis just one day yesterday. So that says to me, okay, now you've got maybe a change of scenario, and you've got the MACD. Um, when I was looking at it earlier on, let me just get out of this. You've got the MACD, still quite positive, but way underneath the previous high that was made at uh, 27,306. Let's just quickly do this with the S&P. I've got a lot of questions coming in. Yes, I do want to look at the XRT. I'll get to it. Um, X, the the S&P is down 18 at 3,028. I'm calling this so far. I haven't got any alternate count. No need for it at this moment. Calling it an F, possible peak F. Remember the peak F. If you've got put technicals, watch out below. But in this case, the MACD is good and stochastic is at 92%. Wow, it's going to take... I'm telling you now, it's going to take time and price. And until the S&P cracks 3,009, 14-period exponential moving average support, I just have to consider that it's a process. And all I, I do, using my technique to start the process, we've done it many times before, got almost the exact high, sometimes to within um, seven or eight points of, of the high. But I, I don't know if this one's going to work. Yes, we are short. Um, so the Dow, that is. So the S&P, we'll watch it closely. Everything so far is bullish in technical terms. Um, not very bullish in the, in the uh, weekly chart and not very bullish in the monthly chart, but price has gone to a new all-time high, leg B in the monthly. Let's see how this process works without getting too carried away. QQQ, one, two, three. The QQQ is the NDX 100 trading down 54 cents at 196.44, held a little bit okay by Apple and maybe a couple of other stocks. Um, this is a peak E, little double top. MACD is strong. Stochastic's at 89%. It has to be priced, and until it cracks 193.10, I'm sorry, 195.10, the nine period moving average goes under that, and then it has to still break the 14 period moving average of 194.13. All I can say is maybe we've started the process of some kind of uh, turnaround and we've got the weekly chart. We've got another day to go, day and a half to go today to finish and tomorrow. And then we can be looking at um, the weekly chart. So far, there's a little doji candle at a potential peak E slash C. MACD is good. Stochastic is good at 80%. Monthly chart is very strong at leg C. So a little mixed uh, action right there. Then you've got the IWM. The IWM is... Uh, making a potential peak E. MACD is good, not as good as it was at the previous high. Stochastic strong at 90%. Weekly chart is not all that good price wise. The technical MACD is improved, but the stochastic is way down 54%. This is, this is still struggling. All right, I'd like to get to gold because gold is, is kind of an alternative thing here at 15, 13, up 17. 
Uh, we attempted a long just recently, took a tiny loss, and now we kind of back long. Why? Because for the first time, I didn't want to get out of our dollar position, but for the first time, it looks like the dollar is kind of conf going to confirm by either the weekly candle coming up uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock or maybe by Monday or Tuesday that perhaps you're looking at a rotation now in the euro, looking quite good. I'll talk about it in a moment. I just want to say that gold has held the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart. It's used the, the uh, green nine-period moving average as a springboard. Every time it goes above it, it tries to push higher. But it still hasn't broken out, and it needs to get, I would, I, I'd say, between 15.28 and 15.33, um, somewhere around there. I'd be very impressed with the dollar of gold because I think that'll show that it's got... It's made a rectangle basing formation and now wants to get out of this rectangle to the upside one more time to try to raise the base of support. Silver also is uh, acting a little bit better. It's up 0.18 at 18.05, up 1.02 percent. That's good. It needs to go a little higher to get an AD. I'll be right back. Guys, Chapman, downtown 206. Thank you, technicians. I'd love to take you. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So as I was saying, uh, silver is also good, but it needs to get over 18.35 uh, of the 25th of October to start leg D. But actually, for silver to show that it's got sustaining running power it needs to start holding uh, two to three sessions two out of three sessions above the high of 18.81 that was made on the 24th of september wow if it does that 
it, was, it means it's reversed the whole process. It's now got a high-level consolidation that's going to be the rectangle formation uh, um, focus and magnetic zone that it goes into up in the 19s. So this is a process. It hasn't done it yet. We'll see, because all I can say is if it goes back under 17.50, it's just stuck in this rectangle formation. Uh, same with gold, if gold starts to fail. I got a feeling that gold is now looking, being looked at by, um, uh, by the big money as a viable alternative in terms of safety. Talking about safety, if you go to the TLT, Look at this, another, just from the low that was made at 137, was it 44 or something? 137, no, 136.99. 136.99 just three days ago. Trading now at 141. Five points, this is, these are bonds. I mean, come on, that's a big move. New leg A, well, that peak B, there's not yet a peak B minus officially because it didn't take out the low that was made back in September. But we are looking at this as a big move up, and it's saving the day in the lowercase dreaded H formation we were talking about earlier when we were talking chart patterns. So that's important. Now, the other thing is that within the context of markets, if you've got yields pulling back and bonds going higher, that usually says that money is going to flow into bonds and out of stocks. I mean, there's, there's not a, a perfect relationship, but it often happens. The safety of the, the volatility of equities means that people want to find some security. And the, once again, the big money tends to just drift over to the kind of safe haven. Now, even more important than that, when I'm looking at this, I didn't finish up to say that the dollar is making that same dreaded H pattern. 97.14 is sacrosanct. Start trading in the 96.80s. Mm, now you're talking about a much deeper correction for the dollar and its leg D, a peak D in the weekly, peak D daily at, on the 1st of October, 99.46. 99. Um, how can it be different? Why did I get a different number? 99.67. Oh, sorry about that. 99.67. I thought that, that looks a little weird. And so on the 1st of October, 99.67, peak D daily, peak D weekly, leg D monthly going from the channel top, this trend line resistance, look at this trend line resistance, couldn't break out. Now it's going to the bottom line, and it means in this channel of the monthly chart, 96.75, let's call it 96, a close below 96.50 on a monthly basis. Would say, uh oh, dollars in for a deeper correction. Time wise, I'm not sure price wise, because I still believe in the long term. We still long from April of uh, 2018 um, at 97. Okay, we're looking also at the EUR USD. I mentioned this just a little while ago. The euro is acting well. Yep, it's acting well. It's making a kind of little double top peak D right there on the 21st of October at 1.1117, and you go 1.1. 1175, slightly lower high today. We'll see what happens. So far, it's acting better. And the weekly technicals for the first time are acting much better. And if this is going to be Friday's close above the 14 period moving average for the second time in three weeks, that's going to be good. Euro dollar currency pair weekly chart made a lower low. This big engulfing candle. We'll talk about it. You know, dark cloud cover. This is a good green cloud cover. So we'll see what happens then. The USD, JPY, this is the yen, the dollar yen currency pair. Started a brand new buy mode and it went from a, a right there. I wanted to label it differently. This is A, B, C, and this is a D. So you add a peak D in the daily chart. I put a plus sign. I haven't got the sign yet to say that. MACDS cross negative stochastics at 80%. Price is way below the 14 period. I still have to wait until the end of the day before I put a down arrow. And it is a leg C in the weekly chart, but under the 200 period moving average. Crude oil, let's just do that. I think we're wrapping up this particular bunch of overview. Very important overview. Dow's down 226 right now. And you're in this rectangle formation in crude oil. I would not be surprised if crude oil is telling us that not only is there a glut, but the... Um, International usage of, of crude oil has not caught up. Uh, so there's more production, there's more in inventory, and it's just failing to break out. A close below 52 says, whoops, they're 50.99 low, 
um, of, I think, October the 1st, around about there. That's going to be tested. But I think right now I'm treating it as just being stuck in the rectangle formation. I did a bunch of things. Okay, questions, transports. Yep, I'll look at the transports. Peak E, I think I'm going to get a sell signal at the end of the day here. I don't want to rush things, but yes, it looks like a peak E sell signal in the IYT, the monthly. The weekly is just stuck in a range, and the monthly has this pattern that just keeps pushing slightly above the downtrend line and then slightly below the uptrend line in this V-shaped pattern. It's just making the uh, apex projection extend even longer. So it's just stuck in a range. Not, it doesn't look very positive at all. Uh, couple of, oh, XRT. XRT is the retail. This is the S&P retail. Oops. No. Hey, what's CRT? Looks terrible. I'm not interested. XRT. XRT is the S&P retail sector. Um, it is trading down. It went to, I didn't follow up here. So PD, there it is in the daily. How many Ds do we see? What a this technique, when I discovered it back in, in a skiing lodge with my son, was my daughter wasn't that keen on skiing, but my son just loved it. And he was skiing away, and I'd go into the lodge with all these you know, investors, business daily, and other books on technical analysis that I used to get. Uh, that's how you got them. I mean, yes, I got charts on the, on the computer, but it was just the, the the beginning of the computer in those days. And I'd sit there, and I finally figured out this peak D, how important was the fourth highest peak. Look, there it is. XRT down 68 cents to 43. Leg B in the weekly chart. Monthly chart peak D at 52.96 August uh, 2018, look at this H, dreaded H pattern. Oh, this is an important uh, period here. Look, you did a dreaded H. There's the lowercase H. Went to a lower low, but it closed nicely above. So it went to a trough B. Oh, it's going to be so important to see what happens this month in the transports because you've got Amazon. You've got this. this is the, the holiday season is really starting to kick in. So we'll see what happens. Uh, a FLUR, FLR. I haven't looked at that for a long time. A couple of questions in the den. Let's see if FL, what was the question? Construction of roads, yep. Yeah, oh my goodness, down 14 points at 16.56. Down 2.81, down 14%. No, no, something's wrong. No, something's right. It is down. Fleur used to be one of the famous companies. Let me just show you a chart of this. Let me squeeze it so you can really see. Fleur, back in the day, look at this, back in 2008, it went from $10 in 2002 to over $100 in 2008 at its high. And now it's trading at 16. How sad. How sad. And this speaks to the, so this is what I'm saying about this whole impeachment thing. Surely that we should be talking about infrastructure. We'd be talking about stocks like Fluid, GGG. This is Graco, uh, Graco Inc. Fluid handling. This is an infrastructure play. Peak D in the daily. Ay, ay, ay. You know, get out of this impeachment stuff. Do something. You've got candidates that you've got to talk about. I'll be back. That was a chaplain. SB's down 232. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is the perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, everyone, Basil Chapman. So, a um, couple of things going on here. Um, you see this two minute, five minute chart? You see this peak E right here at the high of the day, 3,000 and uh, uh, no, that, that was the high of 3,045. Uh, that was at nine, just after 9.30. And then it comes down, 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 goes to a trough D, goes to peak A. And now that's fading, there's that H, the dreaded H pattern. See the month, the weekly chart, 10 minute chart, uh, peak E drops down to a single leg A. Usually that gives you a decent rebound when it does it in one move. Pop pops up to where? To the 14, the black line, 14 period moving average reverses and now it's making the dreaded H pattern. As it be down 25 right now. So a couple of questions that come in about. Uh, uh, so I did the XRT. Uh, did I finish up on the XRT? Uh, XRT. Yeah. So the XRT is acting very poorly. But if you go to the R the RTH. You made a peak C1, C2, double top um, in, a, in a daily. It acts like a, a Chapman Wave peak D. You've got a peak D in the weekly chart, but so far no, no big shakes. And a leg C, G slash C in the mo in monthly. Why? Because it has Amazon. XRT is a better representative of the entire group. Um, Amazon included in the RTH. The, this is the... Um, is this the Van Eck Amazon? Uh, sorry, in the yeah, I think it's a Van Eck uh, retail sector. That makes a difference. Look, Amazon's been holding pretty well. It hasn't made a new all-time high. Uh, 2050 was the high of September of 2018. Plunges to 1307 round number low. Screams up to uh, 2035 uh, in the week of the 12th of July, and now it's back down. It's trading at 1775. Hey, 1775 was that a good year? 17, uh, 1775. That's when Mozart, didn't he write his Hofner Symphony right then? Born in 1756, died in 1791. Um, yeah, maybe. So, um, all right. So we've got 1776 right now. And, oh, 1776. That was a good musical. But we're looking at um, the Dow. The Amazon is down 369. And you're getting resistance right at the 14 period exponential moving average. Uh, I, I, you got to watch it closely. All right, here are a couple of questions that I thought were quite important. The question here is sand. So sand is a stock that uh, is screaming high. It's up 57 at 6.92 right now. Now, this is called Sandstorm Gold. Um, it's one that it's, goes on and off my list every once in a while. Uh, but this is a spectacular move. It made a low, 
back in May of 2017 at $3.18, goes to peak A uh, in September 2017 at 4 uh, 96 pulls back, goes to peak C in January of 2018. That's when the New York Stock Exchange made its all-time high, and it hasn't got back there yet. That's very interesting. 564 back in January of 2018 drops pretty sharply, but then screams up to a peak D. A, uh, did I get that as right? A, B, no, peak C. A, B, yep, C on uh, February of 2019. At 589, pulls back, holds the green nine period moving average, screams up to $7.02 in August for a leg D, and now it's challenging that. So look at the weekly chart, look at this U shaped pattern. Uh, this is a very good action. So I don't know what the question is. Is there a question here, or you just put in the name? You just feel like typing S A N D, huh, Mr. Um, a B, and then it recycles A. B recycles again, A, B, C, D. This is a leg D in the daily. So we'll be watching this closely. But I do think so. Let me just articulate my thoughts. I think that gold, GC, is just stuck in a range right now. But what it is doing is building up a an emotional and a technical support level in that whole 1480 level, preferably not to 1460, start closing under 1460, it's, eh, it's going to be stuck in a, a longer consolidation. At the same time, if it starts to break out, this time if it breaks out, it'll be A, B, it'll be in leg C if it goes above 1520.9 um, on the continuous contract. And that'll say, now you're starting to form a pattern that says this whole rectangle area is becoming a stronger base. That's kind of what I was looking for when we initially put in the position the other day, but we got out of it. Um, now I'm back in. And I, the reason why uh, I'm back in, but I'm in the gold miners, gold for subscribers. I, I don't think it's a great vehicle right now because that weekly chart, a lot has to happen in the weekly chart for it to turn like a cup formation really positive. So, so far, it's just the start of it. It's a process. And that process says, mm, if you pull back and you close way off the high of the day today, on a day like this, when the Dow is down 265, the S&P is down 32, um, I don't know what it's going to take to actually get you to hold big gains, not just make the gains, but hold them. So that's that's what we're looking at right now. Number number two, for my subscribers to my opening call, we've now got, let me just add them up, because uh, I don't like this at all. And what happens at this particular point, it sorts itself out with stops. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions. Only one short position, or two short positions, but seven positions. Usually when I go to seven or eight, that's when the market's about to turn. And I said that it could be a market turn. But we have some stocks that have held very nicely with very nice percentage gains. So I'm raising the stop on those. If we get taken out, big deal. We'll have to try to get back in. But we've taken some gains off already. I'm just lightening up on the long side. I think this is a, this is a, a moment fraught with um, uncertainty. And I don't like that at all. Now, we know this, the, the expression, uh, Wall Street likes to climb a wall of worry. It does. I will say I have an expression, and it says, um, you know, people say the market hates uncertainty. I say every single day there's uncertainty. No, no, no. My expression is the market hates uncertainty about uncertainty. In other words, twice you moved, you've doubled down, and that's where we are right now. It's got uncertainty about uncertainty. And that says it could start to get very difficult for stocks to break out. And if you're looking at them like Caterpillar, look, Caterpillar is at a peak E. A very nice rally from the 111 area low of August, screams up to what was about 141 yesterday, uh, th uh, three days ago. Peak E, a big strong leg B, but it's only just broken out of the weekly chart for the first time. Uh, that downtrend line, same thing with the monthly. It hasn't even broken out of the monthly yet. It needs time. But I'm thinking, going into the next two, three months, I want to see how the cyclical, the deep cyclicals like Caterpillar, like UTX, potential peak F here, but holding very well, 
leg D in the weekly um, at the all-time high. It's 142.86. Yesterday it goes to one, uh, three days ago, four days ago, it goes to 144.63. The previous high was back in May at 144.40. Then the previous high was in September of 2018, 144.15. I mean, three times it goes to the door and I can't open the door and say, I'm looking up, it would actually be upside. Like the submarine, you open the door and you forget that maybe there's water above. You want to be, you want an air. You want, so we're going to be looking to see what happens to these deep cyclicals. As I think that some of the, some of the stocks that did really well in this last move up, they take a breather. Let's see what Apple is doing. Apple is trading at, um, up for at 2.47. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. I'm Alex Bell's Chapman, last segment. So let's just go through this last segment and tell you exactly what uh, I need to see to be a little bit more convinced that this down move has legs. And I do mean legs like a trough A and then a trough B. That'll take a week's, not just a day or two, and then be back to testing highs. Um, so let me go to the Dow right now, INDU. One thing I do not want to see, see the Dow's at the low of the day just about. There it is, testing the 14-period moving average again at 26,938. It's got to be, it's got to, if, if it's going down deeper, you got to look, the MACD is still only just now turning down. The histogram is still positive um, by 25. Uh, that, that needs to get to zero. So that's that. So and the stochastic still only at 86 <laughs> percent. This is just a starter of something. Um, we could change in, in, a, in a you know any news uh, event could change this. So that's what I'm looking at. But the VIX index, I don't want to see the VIX index 
Oh, already it's up 12% today at 13.484. It was at 12.14. What was the low today? The low was 12.19. The low today is 12.19. It's trading at 13.84. I don't want the VIX to expand dramatically in just like two, three days because that's going to use up all the um, all the uh, negativity and all the usurp the energy to the upside of the VIX. It has to. In fact. I wouldn't mind now if we kind of stalled for a bit today and the VIX pulls back to the 1330 level. Um, and then tomorrow it's just kind of a benign day. And then Monday you see a bigger move down. I, I, I just don't want to see. Uh, I don't want to use up the downside energy based on the VIX all in one shot. And unless there's just an absolute continuous to down triple digits today. Down triple digits today, maybe down double digits on Monday, or double tomorrow and triple on Monday. That's the only way we're going to get downside. So in the long term, my monthly charts are still pointing to higher highs. In the short term, as I said before, I'm not going to do it tomorrow's Technical Friday. We'll have a look at the um, what happened during the Clinton years. Remember, it was 98 in December, and it went through to March, and then I think he was uh, uh, they didn't vote to impeach. And then the market ran up to the all time high, magnificent rally to the bubble top in 2000, January of 2000 in Dow, SP in March. Okay, handing over to Steve Rose. Then we got uh, Dave White. I'll be back with Tom a little later this afternoon. Don't forget my webinar coming up on the 19th of November, Tuesday.